Hey admins, welcome to this month's edition of What's New for G Suite Admins. Ryan here, and I'm back with the feature updates from August. Let's get started. Here's the headline news from August. We're adding a quick access side panel to the Docs editors and Google Calendar to help you quickly access other G Suite products without leaving what you're working on. You'll be able to access three G Suite products from Docs, Sheets, Slides, and Drawings. Google Calendar, which allows you to quickly reference, create, or edit invites. Google Keep, to easily take notes, create lists, and see your other content. And Google Tasks, to manage your tasks and to-dos. For more information, check out the Help Center. And now for our admin updates. We're adding a new feature in the admin console that can alert you if we believe there's been a government-backed attack. These can be an attempt to access your user's account or computer through phishing, malware, or another method. You can turn this feature on or off, set up default notifications, and choose how to respond to individual alerts. By default, no alerts will be sent. You can turn these on in the admin console, reports, manage alerts, government-backed attack. You can decide who gets notified when attacks are suspected. When the feature is first turned on, the default setting is for alerts to be sent by email to super admins of the G Suite domain. For more information, check out the Help Center. Routing reports that surface more information on user account activity to protect your organization's security. These new tools will help you identify suspicious activity and see the impact of security policy changes. You can use these reports to audit and set alerts for critical user actions, like password changes, two-step verification enabling or disabling, or account recovery info changes. You can also get visibility into actions that will help you identify suspicious account behavior and detect when user accounts may have been compromised. Lastly, the new reports can also be used to provide visibility into your organization's security initiatives. Check out the Help Center for more information. With advanced mobile device management enabled, you can now specify that certain iOS apps be managed. If an app is managed, you can prevent the app's data from being backed up to iCloud and block unmanaged apps from opening managed app files. Check out the Help Center for more information on how to manage apps on iOS devices. When you whitelist a new app for iOS devices, you can now choose to make this a managed app. When you make this app managed, you can also select it to have it automatically removed from a device if that device's MDM profile is removed. For more information, check out the Help Center. We're consolidating all the features for managing buildings and resources into a single place in the admin console. We're also introducing two new tools, Room Release and Room Insights, to help you understand your organization's use of resources. All features related to managing buildings and rooms can be accessed from the home screen or via directory, buildings and resources in the navigation menu. According to an internal study, up to 40% of meeting rooms are booked but go unused. To help your users find those unused rooms, we'll now automatically free up rooms when all but one guest has declined the invitation. The event organizer will then be advised to reschedule or delete the meeting. You can enable this feature for structured rooms in the admin console by navigating to your resources and selecting the rooms you want to enable for room releases. You then need to click Edit and turn calendar-based room releases on for your selection. We're also adding a new dashboard in the admin console for room insights. Here you can see data such as the most and least frequently booked rooms, the usage and bookage rates of rooms across time zones and various room sizes, how many rooms could be freed up automatically with Calendar's room release feature. For more granularity, you can filter this data by building, floor, room, room capacity, room features, or time period. With app script projects, you can use the G Suite API permission settings to block applications that request access to certain APIs. You can control the settings for app scripts projects like AppMaker apps, add-ons, and scripts that request certain OAuth scopes like Gmail, Calendar, and Drive. Now you can also control access to projects that request App Script Runtime and App Script API. For App Script Runtime requests, 
you can control access to projects that request certain high-risk scopes, like URL fetch or container UI. And with AppScript's API, you can control access to any project that requests scopes for AppScript API to manage projects or deployments. To create a more consistent experience, your users can now access their Google Contacts through the App Launcher or their web browser at contacts.google.com. We're removing the embedded contacts feature in Gmail, so this feature will not appear in the new version of Gmail. We've now enabled access to the Classics Contact Manager for all G Suite domains. Gmail monitors incoming email rates for malicious attacks or misconfigurations that contribute to unusually high rates of incoming emails. To protect your users, Gmail monitors this incoming email rate, and when it reaches certain email receiving limits, automatically rejects messages to impacted accounts. If Gmail rejects 25 or more messages to a single recipient, within one hour, we'll send you a list of impacted users and the number of their rejected messages. We're making the Activity Dashboard feature available to all G Suite users. Previously, this feature was not fully available to G Suite Basic customers. Admins in G Suite Basic domains can decide whether their users can view Activity Dashboards for files that belong to their domain and that they have edit access to. Activity Dashboard gives users useful metrics about how people are interacting with their Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides files. Users can email collaborators through the Activity Dashboard and see viewers over time. For more information, check out the Help Center. We're adding the ability to directly add users and Google Groups as members of Google Plus communities. This feature is off by default, but you can turn it on for certain users, organizational units, or everyone in your domain. To enable this setting for select users, open the Admin Console and go to Admin Roles. After selecting the appropriate user role, click Privileges and scroll to Google+, where you can then configure the Batch Add User Groups to Communities privilege for that role. Well, that's it for August updates. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and save the playlists. And also check out our G Suite release calendar and What's New newsletter to stay informed. This has been Ryan with What's New for G Suite Admins August Edition. Thanks for watching.